Hi, it's Laura at Aquamarine 18 Tarot and Books. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. Welcome or welcome back. In this video, I will be talking about neither tarot nor books. Instead, I will be sharing another love of mine, which is fountain pens and ink, which you can see that I've already got on myself. Just getting started here. So I know that there is, um, you know, a lot of fountain pen enthusiasm amongst the tarot community. Um, I've seen and enjoyed several other folks' videos of their fountain pen collections, and so I thought that I would try out this new overhead filming setup that I've got going on by making a video of my fountain pen collection as well as my inks and how I keep track of my ink samples. And so I'll talk about the pens that I have here and then give a writing sample of each one at the end, showing off some different inks. I'm pretty new to fountain pens, I've been using them for maybe two years or so, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. This is the entirety of my fountain pen collection, minus one. I've actually tried out a lot more different inks than I have pens, so I will talk a little bit about those inks as well, and kind of some of the features of e each of these pens that, that I like and why I think that they're all quite good, um, quite good pens that I would suggest for, for different reasons. So talk about the pens first, then I want to look at some inks, and then I'll do uh, a writing sample. I got interested in fountain pens because, environmentally speaking, I really like the idea of having a pen that you can kind of refill infinitely. Uh, for folks who, who are unfamiliar with this, um, it, it is quite difficult to um, recycle something like a ballpoint pen. I know where I live, you have to go, you know, to one place in town that collects them. You can't just put them out with your, with your regular recycling. And so that's a lot of plastic if you're an uh, avid journaler, as many of us are. And that's what initially drew me to fountain pens. This is one of the first ones that I had, the, the Lamy Safari. These will be familiar to folks um, who know fountain pens because they're many people's first fountain pen. The Lamy Safari and the Lamy um, Vista. These are really the same pen, it's just um, the Vista is the clear bodied pen or demonstrator and the Safari is the solid one. And the one pen that I mentioned that isn't here for me to show you is actually just another Safari. I have a plain black one on my desk at work. So these are very affordable pens and you know are a popular starter I think for that reason. They come in lots of different colors. They have this um, grip that has these kind of um, facets on it, which, you know, if you're learning to hold a pen is, is useful. I find them comfortable. Not everybody does. There's a window in each one so you can see the color of the ink that you have. And for folks who are unfamiliar with these and how they work, you can get a converter for them, um, which is this piece. And the way that you would fill this with ink is that you would twist the end and a piece in here depresses. You would put it in the pot of ink and then twist the other way and it would pull ink up through the feed and into the converter. You can also buy cartridges for this that come pre-filled with ink, which you can actually reuse. You can fill them with a syringe if you like, if you prefer that kind of a system over the converter. These converters are very, very inexpensive. They're a few dollars uh, Canadian. They don't last forever, but they're, they're pretty good, I think. And they come in different um, nib sizes that give you different thicknesses of writing. So this one has a fine nib on it, which hopefully you'll be able to see here. Let's see. I'm trying to go too close here. This is a fine nib. So quite popular pens, um, you know, and I think that the demonstrator is really cool because, you know, when you're using a fun color of ink, you can see it inside there. This is a Kaveco Midnight Blue ink. It's a kind of gray blue, um, but when you get a really vibrant ink in here, it's, it's quite fun to look at. This has been my, you know, daily pen that's been attached to my day planner for all of, um, all of 2022. This one has a fine nib as well. 
I write um, quite small, so I do tend towards the fine nib. Um, and I think that these are really good for, for a beginner. Not, not least of all because they're quite inexpensive. If you find out you don't like fountain pens, you know, better to have bought something inexpensive. Also, if you leave it somewhere, you might not be so um, upset knowing that it's, that it's a very affordable pen. So that's a very popular one. The next one that I'll show is another um, very inexpensive pen that I don't really hear talked about too much and don't see around too much. And that's the Twisby Go. And this pen is not too much different in price, I don't think, than the, the Lamy Safari. It's very thick. Um, it's a very large pen, just for comparison. Um, it definitely is thicker. It comes in different colors. This one is called um, Smoke, I believe. It does not have a clip. Some people like a clip, but it does have a loop. You could wear it around your neck if you wanted to be really cool. And the Twisby pens will have this um, red there. What's cool about this, and why this would be a good beginner pen in my opinion, is besides the price, is the filling mechanism. So the way that this works, if I unscrew it, is that when you want to fill this with ink, it has this spring here, so you would push this down, and I'm not going to do it or else ink will go everywhere. You'd push this down, okay? And then you would put this into the ink and you would release slowly this, and it pulls the ink up into the pen. You can see the ink in there. And so this is a very, very easy fill, very easy to wash out. You just put it in you know, clean water and pump it um, until the, you know, until it runs clear and is, and is clean. Very easy to use, very comfortable to hold. Um, if you like a really thin pen, it's not gonna be the one for you, um, but it has a nice smooth, um, smooth grip. Some pens I find, um, you know, will have some weird kind of ridges and things that can make them a bit uncomfortable to hold. Not this one. This is a really nice pen to use. And I have on there, I believe that that's a fine nib as well. And Twisby uses what's called Joho nibs. Um, they are very good, in my opinion. I really like the nibs on this pen which are also shared with these other two pens, which I'll get to in a second. This is a really fun beginner pen, I think. I use this a lot. It's also a pen that feels pretty indestructible. I don't worry about this being in my backpack or my purse and leaking all over the place. Like, I feel pretty comfortable that this is a pen that, you know, the lid isn't gonna come off. It is a snap lid. Some fountain pens have a screw top, but it's, it's very sturdy. It's not going to leak. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to crack. Um, it's it's a kind of plastic. It's it's a very solid pen, and so I think that this is a really good starter, particularly if um, if the Safari does not appeal to you as a beginner pen because of maybe the the grip shape, for example, uh, or you just you know don't like how this particular pen writes. Then I think that this is a really kind of underrated and not talked about very often alternative that is very very affordable it comes in a couple of fun colors easy to clean easy to fill easy to use and you know one that I think is worth checking out it doesn't have the cartridge option if that's the preference but it is again it's really easy to fill so I think that that doesn't matter so much the next pen this is a pen that I purchased on international fountain pen day just this past year and this pen is the pen that I currently have clipped to my day planner for 2023. And this is a Sailor Compass 1911. This is a very, very lightweight pen. This is going up in price from the others that I showed, um, but not, not by a huge margin. Sailor is a big name in pens and inks. I absolutely adore Sailor's inks. This pen, I have a medium fine nib. Something worth knowing is that the different um, countries of nibs, like the, the, there's not really a standard kind of what a fine nib looks like or what a medium nib looks like. So there's some comparison charts online if you're not sure um, what kind of size nib that you would need. 
This is a really good writing pen. It's very, very lightweight, but feels sturdy. It has, again, the screw-on um, lid, which makes it, you know, another one that you could put in a purse and use comfortably. It is a cool one. And a cool feature that I would like to show that not a lot of pens have, especially not in this price point, is that when you buy this, you know, there's lots of colors to pick from, the um, converter inside comes in a complementary color. So unlike the converters for Lamy, for example, where all of them, the handle of the converter is this orangey red color, the Sailor Pen, uh, the Sailor Compass Pen, comes with these different colored um, converters, so it's not really a distraction when it's inside the pen. I really like this pen a lot. It is a good everyday pen, I would say. And Sailor, you know, Sailor makes some very, very expensive pens. This is not one of them. This is a quite affordable pen, particularly on sale. So it's another fun option. This one may be my favorite fountain pen so far. This one is the Twisby Diamond 580 ALR. And you can see this kind of faceted barrel and you can see my ink sloshing around in there. This color is called Prussian Blue, and this ink, um, excuse me, this pen is a really good one because it has a huge ink capacity. So if you're somebody who doesn't like refilling the pens, but you like using a fountain pen, this is a good option because it holds so much. Because unlike, you know, all of the other pens I've shown so far, which use a converter system, this doesn't really have a converter because the ink is just inside the body of the pen, right? Like the entire body of the pen there is full of ink. So it means it holds a lot more. This is a, again a Twisby, so it uses the same um, Joe nib as the, the Twisby Go, as well as um, the last pen I'm going to show in a moment uses these as well. I really like how these write. This one, you again, you would just twist the end of the pen the way that you would a converter. So putting the end of the pen in the ink and then twisting to, to fill. You can also take this pen fully apart. Not all pens do that. You can fully disassemble this pen, clean it. It comes with a little tiny wrench and some um, kind of lubricant for the pen so you can maintain it nicely. Um, it is a really nice one to write with. And in terms of it being the 580 ALR, the AL is for aluminum, so this is actually uh, metal and it has some metal components, whereas the 580, you know, that isn't the AL, uh, all those components will be the plastic. And the R for ALR is ribbed. So I don't know how well you can see that, but the, the grip here has some ribbing, which, I mean, I didn't necessarily focus on that feature when I bought this pen. I feel neutral towards it. Um, the ribbing doesn't bother me, you know, nor is it a thing that I want every pen to have. It's fine. But I just really love how this pen writes. I like the twist top. The only thing that I would change about this pen that I don't love is that because of the, you know, the system of how you fill it and the structure of the pen, it doesn't post very well. You don't really want to put the lid on top of here when you're writing. So I would just leave it to the side. With the faceted body, it's not a pen that's going to roll away, but I would not write with the cap on this pen personally. That's the only thing that might bug some people in my mind. Love, love the Twisby Diamond 580. This is my first, like, I would say fancy pen, like much fancier than something like this or something like the Go. You know, this is not quite an entry level fountain pen, and I absolutely adore this pen. I use it all the time. My most recent treat is this pen, which is the Opus 88 Coloro. Um, this is, has some ebonite on it, which is an interesting uh, material that you don't see so much um, on fountain pens these days. Um, this comes in a whole bunch of different colors. There are different um, nib sizes available. This one, surprise, surprise, is a fine. Um, I, I have a type, what can I say? Um, and, you know, the screw top lid and something that's interesting about this pen is like the 580, the body 
is what holds the ink. So there is no converter in there. The ink is just inside the body of the pen. And this is a pen that has a back piece that twists off like this. And what this does is that when you twist this, it, it opens a, a kind of valve right here. And so twisting this open a bit is what allows ink to go from here down through here and out, right? This is a really good feature for a couple of reasons. One is that when you have this screwed closed, you're really limited in terms of how much a pen like this can leak, right? If you think about if you're taking a pen somewhere where you're going to have an air pressure change, like on a plane, for instance, that can pose problems with ink in there. This system gets at that issue. You can write with this pen with the valve closed for a couple of pages and then the pen will effectively dry out and you would have to open this again and allow some ink to flow out. So you have that kind of control of, of ink flow. And I'm still getting to know this pen. I really like it. It uses again a similar, um, like the nibs of the Twisby pens. So I've really been enjoying this. And this particular color um, of pen, you know, this comes in a number of different colors, was really inspired by this um, this cover, which I have here for my, my Kinbor Page a Day book that I won from Sarah at Waterchild Tarot. And th so this just felt really, um, oops, making a mess. This felt really like it would go well together to me. And so I really like this combination. And this pen writes really well too. So I will say that this pen, in my ex limited experience with it so far, I've only had it since Christmas, it does seem to write a little bit on the drier side. So it has been better behaved with a wet ink like um, the Hiroshi Zuku Pilot inks and not so much with the uh, Pelican ink that was the first thing ink I tried. I had some false starting with that one. But now that I've got an ink that works well, this pen is a really cool pen. So that is my entire fountain pen collection. I will next show perhaps a writing sample of each pen and I've got here a page that I can do that on. I'm just covering a, a personal page there. So this is the Kinbor page a day. So I'll try the Twisby Go first and this has in it right now What kind of ink is that? I should know. I should be more prepared than this. This is Sailor. That's the, that's the ink. And I really like that ink. You get nice um, color variation from this particular ink, which I quite enjoy. Um, you may know that green is my favorite color. <laughs> and this one I know that I have uh, diamine, sapphire, blue, I don't have the tidiest writing. This one has Kaleko, Midnight Blue, which I think is a bit of a misname because it's gray. <laughs> the Sailor, which I find, while it says it's a medium fine nib, I find it to be pretty fine. This is um, Diamine, and this is Sherwood Green. I swear that I don't write this large all the time. <laughs> this ink is the ink that's on the absolute top of my wish list right now, which is the Sailor. 
from Laura Seaside Blue. This blue is um, really nice, I think. And then this one has Roshizuku. I believe that this one is kind of teal so there's all of the ink samples there and so something else that I really like about using fountain pens is that these different inks you get such a um, range of nice colors and a lot of them have different sheens and sparkles and things so I don't have a big ink collection um, I and when I get an ink something that I like to do um, is swatch the ink. So I have um, this thing that's called Colodex uh, rotary cards. So these are made to fit a um, Rolodex and I make a swatch for each of the inks that I try with this. So um, here for example this is the Sioru um, which is not one of the ones that I just sampled but it's a brand that I, I've tried and so I'll do a, a swatch like this to get a sense of the um, you know the range of the color the saturation and how it writes um, I usually sample with a glass dip pen so that I don't have to fill a pen completely with ink to sample a new ink and the last thing I'll show you which I'm quite proud of I must say is um, my ink sample storage system. I have my ink swatches in this Rolodex. And this is a Rolodex that I scooped from my workplace uh, with permission. It was, it was um, going to be thrown out. So it's not actually the right size for these Colodex cards. You can see I've had to put an extra hole in. Um, I did not know that Rolodexes came in two sizes but I was not going to turn down the free one. So I've been sampling all these different inks. Quite a few of these are from the Diamine Ink Vent calendar where you get a different ink um, each day as kind of an advent calendar. I do not own bottles of the very, very, very vast majority of these. I've been getting from a pen shop in Toronto these kind of little samplers where they'll send you, you know, for a couple of dollars, they'll send you a small little vial enough to kind of fill a pen once. And so this has been a good way for me to try out different inks and see what I might like. One of the things that they do is they will do a random pack and they'll send you five samples at random. And I've found some really, really good inks in that way. Um, I know that my um, my sailor, um, this is the Minatogawa lime I found in that way. I also found the, I think it was Rohr and Klingner. This is like a fuchsia pink sulfurino ink in the in the random as well. I've so far I have eight bottles of ink not counting the little tiny ones from the calendar but so that's a lot obviously a lot fewer than this um, and an ink bottle lasts for a really really long time right so I've been enjoying sampling the the inks the inks that I have actually liked enough to get a bottle of so far are the Pilot Iroshizuku um, this teal I've bought Diamine Ink Vent Holly. This is one that was in the Diamine uh, calendar, but became a regular. And it has a kind of reddish undertone to it. The Diamine Sherwood Green, which is a great everyday green. And as a druid, I think having Sherwood everyday green is perfect. Of the Sailor Kobe. Um, the lime, which is a really fun color to use. 
Lamy Crystal Azurite. You can see a bit of green in this one, which I think is a really neat. This is the first ink that I ever bought a bottle of, I think, that wasn't black ink. This is that Roaring Klingner Sulfurino pink ink. The Kaveco Midnight Blue. This is a really good, I really like this as a kind of everyday, like in the workplace ink. It's not, um, it's not fancy in a way that feels inappropriate on a professional document or, or like a more serious kind of subject matter, but it is more interesting than just a plain black. And then this um, Takasumi, and this is actually a dark gray um, that looks black. So those are the inks that I, that I have um, in bottle form, but this is, this is all of the samples. So it's been really fun to try to um, use all of these different samplers and see, you know, how they go with the different pens. Um, you know, so far these are, these are definitely the favorites. Um, the, um, the Diamond 580 ALR and the, the Opus 88 Coloro. These are some really cool pens. So I've enjoyed seeing everybody else's pen videos. I've had fun making this one. If you're a um, fountain pen enthusiast, let me know in the comments what your favorite pen is or what your favorite ink is because I love trying a new ink. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again soon. I wish you all some happy journaling. Until then, bye.